Yeah, well, my name is Daryl Rutt. I mean, I've been making films in South Africa for the last 30 years now. Is, is, is that possible? But it's true. Um, I grew up in Hillbrow. Uh, my mother was divorced. Um, I grew up with a sister. We grew up in a small little flat. So the only real entertainment we had was movies. And my mother was obsessed with movies, and bless her for that. And that's why I wish I'd won the Academy Award, because like all people, you just want to thank your mother and say, Mom, thank you, darling, for getting me this far. Because she really, we used to have to go and watch all these musicals, and then all these, you know. So she introduced me to cinema, but on a fundamental level. And not only that, she would also buy the soundtrack. So she would know the songs off by heart. And my sister and myself would sing along with her. And there's always drama and vitality in our lives, you know. And so, in other words, life for us was musical theatre, you know. And that definitely, you know, brought my love of cinema to me. I mean, I just, she, she really inspired me. She was my true inspiration. But then I was also very lucky to go to a school called King Edward School. And I went there for 12 years. And the cool thing about that, it was a semi-government school. They encourage you to think for yourself, you know what I mean? And before I knew it, by the time I was in Standard 8, I was writing for the Star newspaper about films. Every Saturday I had a, um, a column called Second View. It's because of that school and those teachers. They were always like saying, think, think, don't just accept oh, the status quo, challenge, ask questions, you know? So it was really that kind of school. So I'm one of the guys I always hear people say, oh, I hated school. I love school. I love going there because it was such a, it was bristling with ideas, it was bristling with anarchy, it was your fellow guys conspiring together to do stuff, you know, but it was all very skillfully guided by very liberal teachers and that is the best thing you can ultimately have is a liberal education. I think if you read biographies of most filmmakers, and not that I want to include myself lucky enough in all filmmakers, but they all love movies and where they get their love of movies is when they're young is your parents take you to movies. My mother, we, um, she was a divorced mother, and um, I had a sister, and the cheapest entertainment was, of course, just going to the movies. And back in those days, it was really cheap. You could go, I could go to the movies after school for five cents. So I went to a school called King Edward School, and down the road was a cinema called the Piccadilly Cinema. So every afternoon after school, I used to go to the movies, and it cost five cents. So I used to see these movies over and over and over again. And before I knew it, at a very young age, like nine, 10, bang, it was in my consciousness that I wanted to make movies, you know? And I think that helps to have a, a deeper love of movies, like initially. But that's not enough ultimately to, to, to make movies, you know? I think you also need to be um, aware of your environment and where you grow up. And I was growing up in South Africa in a very difficult time in our history, you know? But that was also ironically good material for myself to feed on. I was like, oh my goodness, what's happening around me? And as I was growing up, I grew up in Hillbrow, I became acutely aware of what South Africa was about. You know, apartheid, a separation, blacks, whites, all this kind of stuff. So that also started to filter in my brain. So finally, when the two came together, when I was uh, a, an emerging adult of 20, the two collided and I was able to make movies about the country I lived in. And the two like fed off each other. So I was just at the right place at the right time, you know. I started on a Gray Hoffmeyer production, uh, a long-running TV series called City People, and I was the assistant's props guy, but before I knew it, I was actually the props guy, and then I was Gray's assistant. So for six months, I worked with Gray on this TV show, but what was interesting about working at, uh, like on that show was that even though we were in South Africa and we were telling a story about ourselves, we weren't. It was just all full of lies because the SABC was a, a state-run propaganda machine. So there was a total denial of what was happening outside of the windows. And I, as a young man who was concerned about what was happening in the country, even at the tender age of 20, 21, I was thinking, why aren't we doing this? This doesn't make any sense to me that we're not reflecting the outside world, you know? So I managed to um, get together some film stock and friends I'd met on this show and uh, we formed a little collective and we went and made our first film which was called Place of Weeping and Place of Weeping was so ironic because it was the first film made by South Africans that challenged the status quo of the day directly. Ultimately I am a South African and I love being a South African as complex as it is and being a whitey and uh, all that stuff it's just been a fascinating journey you know to explore all these themes you know. Um, well, I've just um, helped Mbongen and Gamma do his first film as a director. I produced it. We've done a version of his, um, his stage play called The Cinemali. 
which is, I think, an extraordinary film. It's extraordinary because Mbongeni is directing something that he really believes in, and I was able to bring my technical skill to it. So the two combined, I think, have made, I think, and I don't want to say this because it's really rude of me, but a work of art. I think, I think Ngema is going to get so much acclaim from this, it's amazing, and he deserves it because it's a true expression of what he believes in, you know? And it was a privilege to stand there and watch him work with the actors, and then I just interpreted it with the camera, you know? So it was, I think it's a fabulous film, so certainly watch this space. I think a cinema is coming. I made this film and it just died. No one was interested and I thought, that's so weird for me because it's actually dealing with very pertinent, really interesting issues in a very powerful, entertaining way. You know what I mean? It's got cops in it, it's got the farm murders, it's got, you know, it's got, it's got everything that's bristling in the headlines but done with a lot of integrity. I, I would hate to use that word but it's the truth. I mean, I brought as much integrity as I could. And it's remarkable for me that it finds a voice at the Rapid Lion Film Festival where it's just been desecrated and denigrated and and you know people condemn this film they haven't even seen it so it just shows you though that the power of cinema has got a cinema of ideas it can really get out there so that's why it's important to continue to make those films and not just entertainments so what if they fail initially because let's hope they find their audiences ultimately you know so for me i'm just blown away that uh, we find recognition in a forum like Rapid Line. And I think it's amazing because someone is clearly seeing the sensitivity with which the film was made.